Good Sunday morning. This is Citizen Klein. Today we start a series, and, it, and it's going to be out there for oh, probably one or two weeks, and heaven knows with me. There's no prediction. But anyway, what it's about is demons. It's about demons for college students. I, I think that probably the hardest time, you know, we, we think it's when, you know, those formative years. But, I, you know, let's call them adult formative years, and those are the ones between high school and graduate school and career, family, and so on. Uh, once the relationship takes on two people, it's, it, it, it's different, and I'm not sure I'm ready to uh, discuss that, never really sure, because, we, you know, we, it's a whole different dynamic at that point. But what I'm specifically talking about are the things that happen when you first, you know, leave high school in college. So one of the demons is going to, the first demon I think is like self-confidence and self-insurance and the kind of emotions that students go through there. And what I found for me, you know, when I was there was that uh, I had a lot put on me in terms of demands uh, to succeed. You know, you'd had this whole period from birth till now and, uh, and for the most part, you uh, were taken care of, you were fed, you were driven, whatever, you, you, you know, to Little League, soccer, uh, and, and some weren't, some don't. It depends on the socioeconomic situation, I understand that, so I'm trying to get somehow in the middle of the continuum here as we discuss it. But you get off there, you're lonely, deadly lonely. I remember my, uh, a, a young man said to me one time that he missed Rochester, New York, because um, it was too sunny where he was going to school. And uh, that struck me is, it's that kind of thing, you know. Familiarity has left. You've got to, you, you know, you're forced into a, a high pressure situation where you got to meet everybody, and, and you got to meet their, you got to meet their expectations, and they have to meet yours. And so that's a, that's a, that's a, a wrap of emotions. That so a lot of the ways of dealing with that. I mean, how would you deal with that? That 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 situation where your life is now different. And it's a new life that's about to evolve from what has happened up to this point. And so there you are. You need to have a drink once in a while. That's one way of handling it. Uh, isolation is another way of handling it. Thus, the, you know, the, enorm the enormity of suicides that we encounter in colleges. And th th those suicides take place for like a variety of, of reasons that have very little meaning not to the person that got them, to the person that set them. Uh, oh, get away from me, you creep. Uh, you're ugly. Would you quit bothering me? Uh, and, 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 you, and part of the dynamic with both of you in this growth thing is it's back to sandbox time <laughs> in college. And you say things and you're learning to play. Uh, some go for sex. Some goes for booze. Uh, and, and, and as I said, the, uh, you know, the dynamic of isolation, over-talking, the, the, the dynamic is, don't crush me. That's, that's the internal feeling of, of the experience that you're going through, is please don't crush me. Let me get over this, and the dendrites, you know, and the, you know the, the, the sensitivity to pain, that emotional pain, and the girlfriend or the boyfriend or the boyfriend or the boyfriend or the girlfriend or the girlfriend for that you've had for three, four years in many cases or two years or you just found them this summer and all of a sudden now you're away at school. These, these multiplicity of, if you will, of wonderful, joyful, uh, growing up kind of uh, Hemingway moments, you know, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe moments, Eleanor Roosevelt moments, these Wonderful, wonderful, Gloria Steinem moment. Uh, she never encountered what she thought was, you know, she said, bring your bra, and now they don't wear them. God, you know, revolutions have to start somewhere. It's a wonderful thing. And so, and then what happens is you start getting coded messages from home in the mail. Now, a lot of you freshmen have never been through this, so I'm going to tell you about it. You're going to start getting coded messages. Here's what these coded messages look like. Dad's been away for two weeks and, 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 or a week or a day and mom has gone here or there or, oh, she's not home right now and all of a sudden 
he's not home right now, uh, I'm call you. And all of a sudden, the, re the relationship at home is about to change a hell of a lot. And you're away, and all of a sudden, you start finding out that mom and dad are probably heading for divorce court or separation. Or, and in, in frequently, a lot of times, if they were older parents, dad has a heart attack and dies, and, or, or whatever. But the dynamic itself that shifted with you going to college and that one that's home, the shift is taking place for both. And, and at the same time, and the empty nester, if it's, if it's a good relationship with the, with the guy and the women and the, or, the, or the adult and the adult. And all of this is kind of very, very complex. I, I'm not making, trying to make it easy. What I'm trying to say to you is, okay, what are the solutions to get out of this? It's, it's kind of like what I'm trying to do with you as a software program a little bit. It's kind of like a game, you know. Okay, if this door is closed, how do I get in this door? And there's so many new doors. Think about the doors, and some of them have skull and crossbones over them. Uh, that's called the isolation door. And then the other door is the door to promiscuity. And, 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 and don't get yourself hung up in something that's a lifelong drag. So, you, you know, discretion, you're responsible ultimately for uh, the, the physical things that happen to your body. I, I'm not sure you are emotionally. Uh, debatable, you know, what do you, if, if we want to be a free willist or we want to, you know, do we want to be uh, on Walden Pond 2 uh, 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 or William James in a variety of religious experiences? Beats me. Anyway, so the dynamic, think it over is my theme. Think, think, think it over. And if you need to pray, pray. You, you, you know, I've got, I've got no tuna and nothing, man. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you don't believe. When they talk about God, they always say, uh, what do they say in those programs, soft recovery programs? Uh, uh, God, as you understand them. <laughs> I, get, I had a friend one time, and it's extraordinary tricks, but in my case, and it was his, uh, in my case, it's God as I don't understand them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and for a lot of you, I think it's that. Especially you poor bastards that are up there at Boston College, you little Irish short guys that have inferiority complexes, and you read books better than anybody else, and, and if you hadn't written poetry by the time you were seven or eight, they thought you were socially retarded. I'm talking about the... Uh, the um, subculture called the Irish, of which I am one, along with my, of course, German. Um, and I'm Native American, like our senator from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren. This is Dave Klein, Citizen Klein, and our first of a college series on emotion and getting into college. Thank you very much, and have a good day.